Halo Sinje. Halo, oke. Okay. Ya, Semi. Yes, pagi ya, ya. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Yes. Halo Pam, halo Toti. Hey Fox. Hai. Yeah, let's wait for more people. Hi, everyone. Hi, Feeman. Hi, Patrick. Hi, everyone. And let's wait for one more minute, like meeting other folks. Hi, Pritesh. Hi, Pablo. Hello. Hi. Okay, so I think we can get started. Let me share the screen. Is my screen now? Yes. Okay, thanks.
Um, today we have uh, only one topic to be discussed during this meeting. And uh, uh, before we get started, let's check uh, any actions from previous meetings. Uh, the first one is about to review the remaining PRs for the proposal for bring clarity to the notary project branding. And I saw uh, most of the PRs uh, were provided uh, comments. I think the PR authors needed to resolve those comments and uh, may need to request uh, another round of review. So I think uh, uh, for the first one, we are uh, working in progress. Uh, the second one, uh, yeah, I did check since, uh, but today uh, Samuel didn't join. So I think from previous meeting that uh, Samuel needed to uh, create some issues for tracking this problem, but uh, Samuel didn't uh, join today. Actually, I did. Uh, no, actually, uh, sorry, I did join. Sorry. Yeah, I did join. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, but I think Saji and I discussed and I agreed to approve that PR as is. And the separate things I found, I will just report them separately. They're not blockers. Okay. So so did you uh, report any new issues? I have them in a I have them in a file that I am managing on my own. I've yet to create the issues in GitHub. Okay, great. But uh, it is not uh, blocking anything, right? Correct. I don't. I did not see any one of them to be a showstopper. Correct for us to publish what we have right now. Okay, great. Yeah. So once you created the uh, created the issue, then we can uh, plan it. Thanks, Samuel. Okay. Uh, I think that's for uh, the previous actions. Now we're switching back to our today's topic. Um, so today I want to discuss uh, some improvements that we uh, I um, think we needed to take for uh, notary project planning. And I prepared a hack markdown file and I opened here. So I tried to uh, cover the improvements for uh, several parts uh, in order to uh, make a good or better notary project planning. and. Uh, uh, as you may know that we have uh, uh, many outdated issues, right? And currently we have uh, uh, milestones like uh, future, discuss, and also milestone uh, for the release, uh, but we didn't make it very clear for what future uh, milestone will contain uh, and also how we going to handle for those issues in the, in the discuss milestone. And also once an issue, is created, we should actually should try out this issue, right? To see whether uh, it uh, needed to, uh, whether we needed to take action immediately or we needed to plan it uh, for future release or it is something that we missed that uh, in our planning for upcoming releases. So maybe we can uh, considering uh, update the scope, something like that. This is related to how we are going to uh, charge the new issues. And also, uh, as I mentioned, we also have some outdated uh, issues. Uh, we need to make it make it clear what is the, the outdated issue or we call what is uh, the stale issue, what was the definition for stale issue or PR and what actions we needed to, to do. Um, and also we have some labels. We, we have many labels uh, for, uh, for different repository and uh, those labels are not well organized. So I also have a proposal that we can um, uh, organize the labels and limit the label we are going to use. So, um, so we can work through uh, those parts and uh, get alignment, then we can update uh, uh, the documentation accordingly. Todi, please. Yeah, sorry, I may be derailing a little bit the conversation about this, but are, are we done with the announcement uh, for the system release or? Okay, for the uh, system announcement, uh, Freeman, you can provide updated. 
to us. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that we are done with this. And after that, we move to the next things that we're going to do. But uh, is there anything that uh, we need to do for the announcement? And is the announcement planned for tomorrow as we discussed last week? Or is there any changes? Sorry, I, I missed a couple of days. I just wanted to. Yeah, got you. I think for the uh, announcement, we have that uh, blog PR. And that PR, uh, there are comments provided by, uh, uh, there are new comments. So I think uh, uh, FEMA it, it needed to take some actions to resolve those comments. And then maybe we can uh, officially publish it uh, tomorrow. So FEMA, please. Uh, yeah, I think the plan is still target this Tuesday to publish the blog post. Uh, I I got uh, several suggestions from Zach and I resolved it last Friday. And uh, uh, I think this morning, I also received some feedback from Bridget and I'm currently resolving those comments. When all of those comments get resolved, I will need um, maintainers to take a look again and uh, approve it before we publish it. If we get this PR merged into May, I think we will need to submit this blog post to the CNCF official blog post and announce it in the Notary Project community and also the CNCF official community. Okay, so we should expect to have the final version tomorrow. So Ritesh, Samir, do, do you guys think you can take a look tomorrow? Pacific time, I mean. Yeah, I should be able to take a pass. Okay. Okay. I will add that PR as an action in the meeting notes so, so people can find the PR directly. Yeah, I'm taking the notes. The uh, so payment will resolve all the comments. Yeah, my screen is uh, breathing. Maybe I can take that. You can continue the discussion around the project triage plan, right? Okay. So the action is that. Uh, uh, sorry, Todi. No, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, sorry for kind of derailing this conversation. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Um, so the action is that uh, FEMA will resolve the comments and uh, uh, ask uh, uh, maintainers to re uh, to review again for the drop of the PR. And we are still targeting Tuesday, Pacific time, to uh, publish it. Yeah, please FEMA help to take notes. Um, so let me switch back to this uh, markdown file. So let me check. Okay. So so let's walk uh, through this uh, document. The first is about the issue life cycle. So actually, I uh, this is the uh, contributing guide I'm currently updating, and I have a PR in the uh, our uh, .github repository to update the uh, existing contributing guide. So uh, in the new PR I prepared, uh, I add a section about the issue lifecycle. So uh, once issue is uh, actually there are three uh, stage for the, for the issue lifecycle. So for the first, uh, when the issue uh, is created, so currently we will uh, label issue with uh, a bug uh, based on the uh, type of the issue or enhancement, which means uh, feature request. And we also add uh, this uh, triage label. This, uh, this uh, is currently handled by our issue template. So once we have a new issue, we will have a bug or uh, and the triage or uh, enhancement and the triage. Then uh, after the issue is created, the maintainers should uh, 
triage these issues. So the triage means that we need to understand whether this issue is available to um, in the context of an notary project. And if it is available, when should we plan to uh, implement this feature? So uh, we need to uh, mark the issue to a proper uh, milestone. Uh, maybe it is in upcoming milestones, or if it is not, we don't have a, a timeline for it. Uh, maybe it is uh, will be put in the uh, future backlog. Um, then uh, I think, uh, uh, yeah, maybe maybe let let me refresh this. Maybe this is not updated. Um, I think I have a new updated version. Um, okay. Uh, so for this, uh, so we we may uh, meet some issue that we cannot make a decision at that time, right? So actually, I have a new version for this line. Th this is outdated, and in that version, that uh, so if issue we cannot make a decision uh, whether we need to uh, put into the future or we will plan for the uh, near future milestones, and we don't understand the uh, value. Uh, for this issue yet, and we request further information. So uh, the suggestion here is that we remove the triage label, but uh, we add another label uh, named the question. So that means we need to have a follow-up discussion on this issue. Of course, we can also bring this kind of issue uh, to the community meeting for discussion if needed. Uh, there will be some issue that after triage, we are very clear that we want to fix this issue because this is not the scope of a notary project. So we remove this uh, uh, triage label and uh, we uh, we put another label, want to fix, to indicate that this issue is uh, out of scope. So this is the triage stage. And after that, uh, it is the development which issue, um, especially for the uh, enhancement that uh, which means uh, uh, feature uh, requirement, especially for this kind of issue, we need to uh, start implementation based on the milestone we planned. And normally this kind of issue requires some proposals to be clearly um, uh, stated in the issue. And also, we also need to uh, make it clear whether uh, there are specification we need to update. The specification includes uh, not only the notary project specifications, but also uh, the client specification if we needed to add new commands or add new flag or some user experience changes. And for the enhancement and the uh, bug issues, normally we needed to have a PR uh, accordingly to resolve those issues. Uh, the last stage is the issue closure. So once we have the PR merge for the enhancement or the bug, we can consider the issue uh, is closed. And also uh, we will close the issue that we marked uh, won't fix. Uh, if the author, the issue also accepted. Uh, so any any questions to this if, uh, issue life cycle? Uh, after issue is marked with triage, when does it move to enhancement or bug? Like once the fix is proposed or once we have determined that this needs to be fixed? Uh, sorry, and uh, Pradesh, I didn't understand it uh, correctly. Okay, yeah. so after let's say there was a new issue created, we triaged, like it was, it will be marked triaged. Then someone will take a look at the issue and it will be marked as enhancement or bug. Uh, no, uh, once the issue is created, it will be automatically, uh, actually, the user can select whether it is a bug or it is the enhancement. This is uh, in our issue template. So it is not decided by the by the uh, charge, of course, in some cases, some issue may 
turns out it is not an enhancement, it is a bug, we, we can change the label accordingly. Why not mark all of them as a triage and we can triage all of them and put the right label later on? Because like, let's no. say if a user puts a, a issue which which is not related to notary as bug, we'll have to go back and again look at that issue. Um, yeah, the currently we provide with the options to to the users who report who re, who report or create a new issue, and we we have these uh, three labels, um, uh, in in the in the template. I I think uh, user can have this option, but during triage we can make a decision accordingly. And how we will know what issues needs to be triaged? Uh, for example. Uh, let me open a notation repo. So once you create an issue, uh, you see here, for example, this one, uh, it was created by you, Pritesh. So you know that it's a uh, enhancement because you did some investment that we, we don't have this feature, right? So you, you mark it as an enhancement and this triage label will be automatically labeled for this issue. So as a maintainer, for example, if we have a weekly cadency to review all the issues, to triage the issues, we will know uh, this is uh, some issue we, we didn't uh, triage yet. Because once uh, we triage this issue, we will remove this label. Okay, so issues which are marked with triage needs to be triage, enhancement and bug fix. Uh, just additional ones and yeah and uh, this we have in the you see okay. if if user created a bug then the label will be bug and charge if user create a feature request it will be labeled enhancement and charge makes sense so once it tries we remove that word and what happens after well, uh, okay so when so, do we remove the word triaged? Like once we have decided that this, it has been reviewed by maintainers? Uh, yeah, maintainers, actually this is related to the process of uh, of triage. So this is also, I want to align uh, with all the maintainers here. Okay. So so normally the maintainers, especially issue created for certain uh, repository. And also we, we have a governance maintainers, right? We, we needed to, uh, charge uh, the issue on a regular basis. So it could be weekly or bi-weekly. So we can decide the, the frequency. And once, because we, we have many maintainers, right? So maybe at some time, not all the maintainers can work together to charge the issues. But uh, in case any uh, maintainers charge those issues, they need to share the results in the Slack channel so that other maintainers or other contributors will be aware of these changes. And for some uh, issues that we needed to further discussion that uh, we needed to have this online meeting to make a decision uh, whether this issue should be, um, um, should be put into certain milestone or whether we should fix or not, we can bring it up in the committee meeting. So- Makes uh, sense. So once yeah. an issue is triage, we remove that label. Now, how do I know which issue are open for pick and which issues someone is working on? Uh, Let's say I want here, to... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so normally say... for... Please go ahead, yeah, sorry. Please. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> So I'm like, let's say once it's triage, we remove the label. Now the issues are marked only bug or enhancement. Triage label is gone. I am new to the community, or I am. Let's say I am old. It doesn't matter. Uh, I want to work on. So I want. I want to find an issue where which I can work on. Now just by looking at issues, I cannot see which are open for grab and which issues are already been worked on. Yeah. So during triage, uh, so at that time, we may know that, for example, if we plan some issue in the near uh, future, for example, for milestone uh, one total one, take a notation as an example. So at that time, if we know someone can uh, work on that or someone comment on the issue, then we can uh, 
in the in the issue, we can just, uh, for example, we can during triage, we can uh, assign this issue to the contributor or maintainers. Makes sense. But, Thank uh, you. That but, answers but my if, questions. Yeah, but but if not, I mean, at that moment, if not, for example, if no one comments that I will take this issue and we don't have any information uh, for 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 certain um, at, at that moment for for some maintainers, we can just leave the uh, uh, assignees as empty, and we can offline discuss or. During uh, the community meeting, we can make a decision. Yeah, I also saw uh, Samuel's hands up. Please. Yeah, uh, I I pulled my hand down because I think I got some of the answers. But I was wondering why are we creating these directions? Can we not use something more standard that say is more practice widely and like is there a common triage mechanisms that is used by cncf based uh, projects um do, do you have any uh, examples uh, actually triage is uh, one of the practice and for some projects they even have some uh assigned maintainers uh, certain maintainers uh, in a in a rotation based as a charge manager. So they, they charge the issues in a, uh, on a regular basis. So no, this I, is no, actually, I don't have, yeah. Yeah, I don't have a project in mind. I'm looking for guidance from others who have worked on other open source projects to see if they know of a more standard approach to follow so that we have new people come in they don't have to read our docs to understand how we do things if we follow a standard practice. Just like we have we have SEM versioning, right? We can say we use SEM versioning and people know what, what it is. So I'm wondering, is there a common standard for this? Uh, yeah, um, as I know that uh, some uh, community also use this kind of uh, uh, label to mark the issues that they, they, they are aware that this is the uh, something new and they didn't uh, uh, review or charge it uh, uh, previously so that they, they know what action they need to take. So the point here is that uh, uh, after some time, there will be some new issue or um, bugs or features created in the in the in this issue uh, tab, right, under this tab. So, so as a maintainer, how do you know you charged it or, or not? So the label is a, is a way for that. And also, as I explained that some community, they, they have a dedicated maintainer to charge issues. So, so maybe for that case, they don't need to have this charge because they have a dedicated people monitoring the, the new issues or PRs. Okay, that answers it, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Samuel. Um, but this is the uh, yeah, way where I, um, Propose that we we can um, uh, we can follow, uh, but uh, over the time, if we find this practice is uh, not good, and we know there are other better uh, options, then we can discuss and we we can adjust it. The purpose is uh, actually make our planning better and better. So this is the current practice I uh, I propose. Um, yeah, so this is for the issue life cycles. And we also, uh, coming back to this document, we also uh, touch a bit of the process of charge. So currently we have a, we have some um, time zone difference, right? And uh, um, so it is also very time consuming if we uh, charge all the issues uh, on every community meeting. So my proposal is that we can, uh, uh, for maintainers, if someone charged those issues uh, offline or uh, async asynchronously, they need to share these results so that uh, other maintainers are aware of these changes and other uh, maintainers, they can also comment to see whether it is uh, uh, proper or not. If not, we can discuss to find a, uh, to, to fix the, the results if needed. 
So the outcome of the triage is that we know whether an issue we need to plan for upcoming milestone, whether the issue we don't have any timeline now we need to put into the future backlog or the issue we won't do anything about it and we uh, label it, something like that. And if we know someone is actively want to uh, work on certain issues, then we can assign uh, uh, to the other needs. Okay, so that's the process of the triage. So I also, here, I also would like to hear uh, Samuel or Pratesh, uh, do you have any um, suggestions on the triage? So, yeah, so for example, um, next week we will have a new issue created. So, um, so any suggestions whether we should uh, uh, join together to charge those issues or we can charge those issues offline and we share the results as suggested in, in this. Yeah, I think it was, it's okay to work uh, offline and say, hey, here's the issues which came in, here's how you've triaged it, because coordinating a meeting uh, may not be possible. But if we block, say, 15 minutes every week going forwards that we'll triage issues, maybe we add an agenda item and we'll try, we can try to do it together if we have just a couple of issues coming every week. Otherwise, we can do it offline as well. But let's start with doing it in the meeting for next week. Okay, so your suggestion is that uh, we, we can reserve, for example, 15 minutes uh, in the community meeting to charge issues. Yeah, let's let's start with that. And if it becomes unwidely, then we can figure out how to do it offline. But I don't expect us to, you know, have a hundred issues to triage in the first meeting. Yeah. Um, okay. So we can try that. Uh, maybe Fimi, you can help to add a note because uh, once I added the notes, my screen is uh, freezing. Could you uh, help to add a note that we can try the practice that uh, uh, for the Monday community meeting, um, we can reserve 15 minutes for charge. Fam, please. And this is for the new issues coming in, right? We still have the problem yeah. of the existing issues that we have not discussed yet. Yeah, we will address that uh, later. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is for the new issue. Fam, please. Hey, thanks, Lee. Uh, I think the offline to uh, triangle the issue is a good idea. Okay, you, you think uh, the offline charge is uh, also a good idea, right? Uh, yes, I think. Because when I review the issues, uh, because I want to um, hear some issues, but uh, when I review the issues, I need to uh, uh, to to review the code. So sometimes, uh, if we to discuss the issue, need to be closed. Uh, if we discuss the online, so it's the uh, it may be need a so long time to discuss. So I think we need to uh, discuss this or review it uh, offline and uh, mm. talk it uh, online. Yes. Yeah, understood. So uh, maybe for some issues, we, we also need to spend time to understand it, right? So during the uh, online meeting, it will take more time. So we may not uh, uh, complete it in time. Uh, yes. Yeah, as I think that's a value uh, comment. Um, how about this? Uh, I, I think uh, we we can uh, we we can try both because uh, once we need to bring it up to the community meeting to try the new issues. Actually, uh, before the meeting, we needed to understand. Uh, we needed to uh, review the list first. I think otherwise it may be uh, too time consuming. And in some cases, there could be 
the author waiting for some answers. So if we uh, defer for one week to make a decision, maybe it's also a bit late for them. So I think we can combine offline and online and on uh, and during the online meeting we can just uh, uh, work through and confirm it so if no any big uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean uh, no big comments on it we just uh, work through and uh, finalize the the trial results and we can bring specific issue for discussion during the meeting I think this could be more efficient. Uh, Samuel, what do you think we can combine offline and online? And so that uh, uh, once offline, we, we have some um, review the results. We can, during the online, we just work through all the results to confirm whether it is uh, aligned among all the maintainers. And we can also pick up specific uh, issue for discussion. Yeah, I think I will defer it to the people who are more closer to the code. I think the comment which was made was more for, say, you have a bug, which is a critical bug. It has to be fixed. It cannot wait for a week. I was more concerned about deciding on enhancements offline and then starting work on enhancements and then committing them to a release. That's what I was concerned about. But if I think we can have a hybrid model where bugs, we can start working offline and we can triage them and we can work on them. Enhancements, if they change the direction of the project, they should mm. be reviewed before we commit to them in a given release. Mm. Okay, it uh, it makes sense, especially for the feature we need to decide uh, which milestone. Yeah, we can, uh, yeah, we can communicate via uh, the online meeting and also offline. If we have some time urgency, we can uh, offline to get alignment. Of course. So, uh, uh, Feynman, please help to uh, add the comments. We can have a hybrid mode to charge issues, uh, especially for some issue related to bug. Uh, there is uh, some kind of urgency. We can uh, do it offline, but. Uh, we will also share the results in, in the Slack channel. And for the feature requirements, uh, we can use the community meeting to uh, confirm uh, the timeline milestone for it. And yeah, also the value, yeah. yeah also I agree that, the value. Yeah. yeah, I agree that the hybrid, hybrid model for triage with different types of issues is the most efficient way for us. I will take that note. Okay, uh, I think next is the stale issue of PRs. This is also related to uh, what uh, Samuel mentioned. So I also have this uh, document here. Uh, okay, so let me... Yeah, let me open this one. Seems... seems uh... Sorry, I see it. Fan Fan is still hands up for a long time. Uh, no, I, I didn't oh, say it. that. Okay, I think this is the updated version. Uh, so for the stale issue or PR, so here is the definition. So a stale issue is the one that has not had any activity or updates for 60 days. So that means once the issue uh, was created, maybe there was some discussion and after some time, the discussion was stopped and no ending activity around it for six days. So this will be a stale issue. Um, similar to a stale PR. So once the PR is created, there's no review activities comment for 
45 days, then we consider this PR is uh, stale. And for stale issue or PR, we will have a special label stale. And also uh, we expect uh, maintainers uh, to comment on the stale issue or PR um, to understand, to work with the author to understand whether we need to take uh, further actions. And after that, if still no additional activity in certain days, the issues or PR can be closed. So actually, this process can be automated using the dependent board. Uh, sorry, I think using the uh, GitHub action, we can use the workflow to enforce this uh, process. So uh, with that, so everything will be automatically handled. But before that, we can first align um, the process and also the, the, the definitions, the days. Yeah, any comments, uh, Samuel Pradesh? I think from my side, it looks good to me. So if uh, everyone agrees on that, so later we can develop a workflow and we can, um, starting from one repository, we, we can try that, we can enable that workflow. So with that, we also don't need to manually clean up all the uh, stale issues. Uh, as you may know that we have a, we have issues that in notation or roadmap ripples and uh, uh, for a long time we don't have any activity around that. So that means this issue has no value so we can um, consider close, close it after consulting the uh, with the issue author. Okay, so if no further comments, uh, okay, I saw uh, Samuel's, uh, Samuel's comments. The proposal uh, is good, okay. So I continue. So Pratesh, you will stay in the meeting, right? I'm here. Uh, yeah. So this is for the stale issue PRs. We also have the labels. Uh, I will not use this one. Um, labels, let me scroll down. Yeah, so uh, previously we just uh, create a label and maybe some labels uh, without a good definition. So if you check the labels in different repository, you, you may get lost because there are many labels and uh, we don't clearly understand the purpose. So here in the contributing guide, I also uh, try to organize the, all the labels and uh, make a clear definition for the, for the labels. So some common label for issues and PRs, we can have a bug, we can have a, a label documentation, we can mark uh, issue or PI as duplicated. This is for future. Uh, this is uh, uh, during charge, we still need uh, further information. So we mark those issue and PR as a question. This is for stale issue PR. This is for testing. This is for triage. And this is especially if we uh, require some user experience, especially related to the notation CLI. And Wait. I also, yeah. Are there uh, in GitHub is there a functionality to differentiate between labels for PRs as compared to issues? Uh, I think some com some uh, label can be common for PR and the issue, so this is the common part. So for what what does triage means for the PR? Uh, yeah, in some cases 
So normally we have a issue, then we have a PR accordingly, right? So in some cases, uh, uh contributors or uh just uh, create a PR to address some some problem, and maybe that is very uh, straightforward problem. They just put uh, uh, the purpose in the description in the PR description. But so that's already assigned. I am assigned to understand like that will be already assigned to maintenance by default, right? Um, so everyone, yeah, PRs, everyone, yeah, automatically, yeah. So they are already there in. Uh, yeah. Yes. SQL. Yeah, I will take that uh, comment. So maybe Femen, you can help to write a note that uh, maybe we don't need to charge for the PRs. I, I will take this omen and uh, uh, think about it after the meeting. Sure, maybe same I. Goes, yeah. Same goes for question. I mean, if we have further question, which means PR uh, issue is still in triage phase, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, the same for question whether we need it for the PR, right? We we can just uh, comment in the in the PR. Yeah, yeah, this is most uh, useful for issue. So female help to take a note for question and uh, chart. Uh, maybe we don't need for issue. Uh, I will think about it later. Uh, to uh, maybe I I uh, thought about something. Uh, when I prepare this. I will take uh, this note and get back to you. And we also have some issue specific. For example, we need help from the community. Uh, and this is a good first issue for the newcomers and some issue we won't fix. Um, and I would also say that this may not be a complete list. And over time, if we find some other labels that are very useful, we can uh, amend this contributing guide and add it to, to to this table. So the idea behind this is that we we add a label for a certain purpose and we align that this is uh, um, by adding this label is very helpful for us to to planning and to handle the uh, the daily work. And uh, we we try to avoid uh, adding uh, adding labels randomly and end up with a huge list of label without a very clear um, uh, clear purpose. Okay, that's for the labels. Uh, the last one is about the milestones. So currently we, we have three, we have a future, future, discuss, and also release versions for for the uh, for the for each releases. So my proposal is that we deprecate the discuss milestone and use the label question for those issues and the PRs. And we only have a milestone um, future. This could be a backlog. That's uh, uh, issues that uh, we confirm that these issues are very valuable to not a project, but currently we don't have a plan for, for release this uh, issue. Um, so we put it uh, in the future uh, milestone and taken this as a backlog. And we can also regularly review the future milestone. For example, once we are about to cut a new release and at that time, we can start to review the future backlogs to see whether anything we can, pro uh, we, we, we can plan from the future backlog for the next release. So with that, we can have this circle that we we made a plan. We, for example, we have a planned to release uh, and we also have a feature backlogs. And once we uh, achieved one milestone, we can start also reviewing um, the issues in the future milestone to understand whether some of the issues will be uh, put or marked for a new release. Uh, and we also have the milestone for releases. So I think uh, uh, my suggestion is that we can have at least uh, two releases planned. For example, uh, currently we have a notation uh, V1 release uh, last week. So I think we can have, uh, we can create two milestone 
1.1 and 1.2, and we can triage issues, or we already know some issues that from previous release we needed to put into the 1.1 or 1.2. We can start to do that. And once we are close to release 1.1, uh, around that time frame, we can start to, for example, review the future um, milestone to see whether any other issues we can um, plan for 1.2 and also for 1.3. So I can talk about the discuss milestone. I think we added that for the issues we think can possibly go in 1.2, but needs more. Uh, sorry, Pradesh, I think we lost you. I didn't oh, okay. hear last sentence. Oh, okay, my bad, sorry. Uh, so uh, the discuss milestone we added that earlier because we wanted to mark uh, certain issues which we which we want to add in one dot no sorry my bad i will take it back so we used issues earlier to for the issues which things we for the for the issues which we think we can add it to one dot oh but because of time constraint or some other challenges we wanted to discuss them more that's where that's where earlier we were using discuss milestone and i think that would be true for future milestones also. For example, there might be some some issues which we need for which we need more discussion whether the, for whether we should add them to one dot one or not. So that's where we can use discuss to mark them. It's okay, these are the issues which we need to discuss before we add them to one dot one milestone or the upcoming milestone. Yeah. Uh... So my proposal is to use a label to achieve this goal. We uh, can label with those. Questions. Sorry. But, but by default, there would be issues labeled as questions which need more information, right? So that there might be some collision. Like we have an issue which needs more information. We will mark them as a question. And then we have a milestone we have an issue which we want to discuss whether it should be added to a particular milestone also marked as a question. That creates a collision and will create further confusion. Um, so you think there could be issue that uh, uh, with even with label question, we still need to, to have a milestone to confirm the timeline? Yes. Yes. For example, let's say there's a new feature where some of the maintainers say they need it for 1.1, .1, but some of them are, haven't agreed on it and we need further discussions before the 1. Dot, like whether we should add them to 1.1 .1 or not. That's where I was thinking to use the discuss milestone if we mark or something as discuss, which means we are still debating whether that should go into 1.1 .1 or not. Or basically by 1.1, .1, I mean upcoming release. Mm. Yeah, Freeman, please. So, uh, Pritesh, in that case, would you consider using the future milestone for those issues which are not confirmed for any milestone yet? I think I the purpose think of... that that yeah, might provide some that might create some confusion saying okay this issue will come in 1.2 and then now it might not even come in 1.2 because we might decide it, okay it's not important let's not do it for 1.2 also mm. I mean, because 1.2 we don't know what will go in 1.2 right so at that time it would be difficult to mark as 1.2 also because as an issue watcher i think oh it's it will come in 1.2 but then again we will move it out And possibly we don't even add it to 1.1 .1 and 1.2. Possibly it would be just in future then. Yeah, I guess I think, to avoid uh, yeah. confusion, I, I was thinking to use the discuss label. The only reason I don't I don't think we can use so the only reason why I wanted to use discuss milestone was because question label is reused for something else also. And milestones are just easier to track because issue shouldn't be using them. Um, okay, so so let's uh, make a summary. So the future means that uh, uh, 
this issue has value, right? And we don't have a timeline, and we know that currently we don't have any pipeline uh, timeline. So it's uh, in our backlog. And the release, and we know that uh, what issue will be released in the upcoming milestone. And also maybe some issue we know that we will plan it after the upcoming release because we, we have uh, some, for example, if we want to release in two months or three months, we know some issue cannot be fit into one one and some issue can be with lower priority, we can put it to, into 1.2. And there could be some issue that, as Pradesh mentioned, it is not uh, about some questions for further information. It is actually, we know it's valuable. We just didn't decide whether it should be in 1.1 or 1.2, but it doesn't, uh, uh, I mean, we, we know we need to um, do it in near future, but uh, uh, it is not in the backlog, but we need to figure out which milestone we, we should put, right? You mean this? Yes. It is not for the, for the future, it for maybe for the upcoming two milestones, but uh, we just not decided yet. Yep, you and summarize it perfectly. Yeah, so for some issue with question, maybe we don't have, at that time, we, we, we don't have any, clue about whether we even need to fix it because this uh, we need more question. Uh, we, we need to ask more question for further discussion. So I think, uh, yeah, so le let's do that. And later we can figure out whether um, whether we need to uh, to change it. So we, we keep the current uh, uh, milestone, future release versions and uh, discuss. And uh, later I will update this with a clear description. And we use this three kind of milestone for uh, for planning. Okay, we we can we just need to practice it, and if we figure out later it is uh, useless, then we can just uh, make changes. I think we can also open window on and wait for other maintainers to leave comments on the milestone management. I mean, we can still have more maintainers to comment on the PR to decide which milestones are really necessary for our daily triage. I agree with him. And uh, also, I have comment about future. I mean, every, every issue which is open, there is potential for future, right? Even though it's triage, so do we really need a future milestone? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I didn't get the point. Uh, so in every issue which is open in any of the repo is basically a future milestone, unless it's tagged with a particular milestone, right? If an uh, issue is not tagged with a particular milestone, it is by default future or it would be closed. Uh, yeah, that means that so once we need to put the issue into the future milestone, that means the this issue does have some value. So not all the issue will be in the future, uh, future milestone. So that means we need to after charge, we understand the, the value, but we don't have a timeline for that. Uh, if it's of not value, shouldn't we just close the issue? Why will we keep, um, keep an open issue for which we think there is not a value? Uh, so you mean um, issue, if we know it is valuable, we close it. So by default, any issue without a milestone should be the backlog, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what I think. I'm mean, like, otherwise you will have to go and tag every issue which are open and has useful as future. That's a lot of work. Instead, just treat any issue which is open as as future. I mean, you don't need a separate milestone for that. And if a feature, if an issue is not important, probably we will close it at the time we figure out it's not important. Yeah, um, we are out of time. So uh, Freeman, could you help to take this note to consider whether we should use the feature? Uh, we can think about it offline and we can, uh, 
aligned in in the next community meeting. Okay. Sure. I would suggest that we using PR to make final decision as we have maintenance there. Uh, you you mean the update uh, this to the contributing guide? Yeah, I think we can still review there and uh, make final decisions with our maintenance. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, actually, some uh, I think most of the uh, items we discussed previously are in the contributing guide. Uh, we can use that PR. And for the milestone, currently it is not in the contributing guide yet. I will consider it. Uh, please add a note for that. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Pradesh and other folks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Pradesh. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Yeah.